Okay, I think we will make a start. So thank you all for joining. Uh, this is uh, my final Live on Service Now presentation for this year. Um, so thanks for joining my last one for the year. Uh, we will be, of course, having additional sessions next year. Uh, today we're going to dive into uh, change management uh, specifically in within service operations workspace which is a new experience that we've built and we're going to go and have a look at that and see how that looks um janice yes you are muted <laughs> we can't hear your dogs <laughs> thank you all right let's uh, make a start uh, we have our usual safe harbour uh, in case we uh, discuss any forward-looking uh, functionality on the roadmap uh, that's not yet uh, generally available. Please don't make any buying decisions on that. Uh, don't expect us to do that today because everything I'm going to cover is already available in, uh, in the product in Vancouver. So just uh, a little bit of uh, housekeeping. This is part of a series. Uh, as I mentioned, we've had a number of sessions. Uh, I've delivered a number of sessions on change and DevOps uh, this year for Asia-Pacific Asia uh, Japan region. And um, if you go to that link, if you um, use your phone to scan the QR code, it'll take you to the link that's on the bottom of the page where you can see uh, sign up for additional uh, sessions on on ITSM and, and other topics as part of this uh, series and we will be uh, doing more of these uh, next year so I you you you're, you've all been uh, muted uh, but you should all should all have access to uh, the chat and the Q&A function so I will save time at the end for Q&A. Uh, because I'll be sharing my screen, uh, I won't be able to see what's happening in the chat until I pause. But please, as you go through, if you do have questions, put them in the Q&A so we can track them. And then I will uh, I will save time and make sure that we that we cover those as part of the session. If, if we don't get to anything, I'll make sure that we follow up at, at the end afterwards. And you will be um, given a survey at the end to, to look for your feedback so we can improve. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be shared on our community page. So a little bit about me, for those who don't know, my name is Mike, I'm based in Melbourne in Australia. I'm an outbound product manager in the ITSM business unit, specializing in change management and DevOps. So today the agenda is really going to be all about uh, what change management looks like and how it functions within service operations uh, workspace. And as part of that, we're going to be uh, creating a new change in SOW and having a look at uh, what that looks like and the and the over the uh, overview containers and the dynamic pages. We will, schedule a conflict-free uh, change, we will evaluate the risk, and then we'll move the change through the life cycle, through to closure, and have a look at the, what that looks like. I will also uh, show you briefly how to dynamic, how to configure the dynamic overview pages. Uh, obviously, different customers will have different requirements around what they want to see. I'll show you how that works. And then finally, we will uh, go through how to configure a, a basic change model. Okay, so just a little bit about, about change in SOW and, and, and what we've done. When Service Operations Workspace was first rolled out, um, uh, customers were able to create changes uh, in SOW, but you couldn't manage the change through the full life cycle um until we rolled out that, those updates in in Utah so really what what we've tried to do here is this experience is really based on uh users who may not 
know much about the change process. They may not have in-depth knowledge about how change works and what to do. And the idea was to declutter what's there uh, in the in the old classic form and provide a way for users to focus on jobs to be done. So information is surfaced at each state as you transition through the states, which help you uh, focus on, on what you need to do next. So it kind of guides you through how to complete a change and how to follow the process. So it's simplifying the form, it's decluttering some of the data and really helping uh, those users that that may not have an in-depth knowledge uh, about change. So it's all it's all dynamically driven through overview containers in in Surface Operations Workspace. Uh, in addition, we have provided a new um, uh, scheduling view. So the, the the way you schedule changes and and the view that you get is, is a lot simplified and. Um, helps you to visually identify whether you have any conflicts and, and when to schedule your change to provide a more intuitive uh, view of the process. Okay, we will jump into a demo. Just need to stop the slides and share my screen, other screen. Do we have any questions at this point before I launch into that? Please put them in the Q&A if you do. Okay, um, I'll check. I'll check the uh, Q&A later for any any questions. All right, so I'm logged into my ServiceNow instance and I'm logged in as um, as an ITIL user, and as a as an ITIL user. The landing page that gets displayed for me when I log in is the Service Operations Workspace. That's the default landing page that you will see where you have your overview widgets, uh, et cetera. Now, to, to create a change, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, here at the top, you've got this plus sign. If you click on that, you can uh, create a new interaction, incident, or change request, or you can go to the lists. And if you scroll down to changes and select open changes, uh, you've also got obviously the list of, of existing open changes and you've got a new button here. Um, they both, either this new button or the plus sign here will do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to create a new change here. And I'm presented with my intercept page as the first step where I can see all the different change models that are available to me uh, to select. So we've got some, uh, uh, you can see the different change models that I have, and you can also see the pre-approved uh, changes that I have, which are, are the standard changes where templates have already been uh, created, and I can pick any one of those. Now this, depending on the, the role and the group, that I belong to, you know, I'll be able to see only models that are applicable uh, to me. And I can obviously filter this uh, filter this list here by uh, either just showing pre-approved or the ones that I've pinned or, or everything. So for our demo, I'm going to pick a normal uh, change model and click next. And you can see here that the form is significantly simpler than what you would see in the old classic uh, change form view. So I'm just presented with some initial, very basic information that I need here in order to uh, uh, initially create the change. I'm just gonna copy some data from, uh, in order to populate those fields. So we're going to make a change to our email server. And I'll populate the uh, description and then also the uh, justification into those uh, fields. And now from this point, I can either click this little uh, save icon or save at the top. 
they both do the same thing. So I'll just save here. All right, and now you can see uh, some more um, containers being surfaced on the on the form in in this UI. So I'm able to see how I'm progressing in terms of uh, record information is shown here on the right hand side. As I progress through, this will surface uh, information that I need to uh, have a have a look at, and then that these containers are surfaced here. And I can almost follow these in order in order to move through the life cycle. So at the top of the form here, you can see as this is a normal change, it can progress through these uh, various states, assess, authorize, schedule, implement, review, uh, closed. So we're going to follow that. Um, we do also have these other tabs here, which I'll, I'll uh, show you how those, uh, what they look like in, in, a, in a little bit. So let's go ahead, first of all, and add the scope of the change. Now I will pick uh, email as my configuration item. And I will save that scope. Now you can, uh, if, if, if there are, if there, if it's an application service that's been that's been mapped to the CI and the impacted services will be brought in automatically. I can refresh impacted services here in order to trigger that, which I'll do. And you can see that's been initiated. Uh, the, the other triggers for that are when the change moves from new to assess, it will trigger refresh impacted services to happen. Or if I run conflict detection, uh, it will also trigger that. So you can see here that uh, my impacted service has been added. And obviously if I click in here, it's going to show me uh, that uh, service has been added, that configuration item. So if, if, I, if I no longer want to see this information, I can collapse that container. So with any of these containers, you're able to expand them or collapse them uh, as required. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is assign the change. So let me click on assign. And I'm going to assign it to my uh, application development team and to my engineer, Andrew. And I can give him some notes here if I need to, to give him more information about what he needs to do. I'm just going to save it. So over here on the right, you can see um, I've got the requested by information, which is me, my ITIL user. And now I can see Andrew in the application development team has been added to the change. I can either reassign the change uh, by clicking this button if I want to. I also have available here, if you click the three dots, the contact information on this card for, for this person. So it'll give me his time zone, uh, email address. If, if he had a phone number, it would give me the phone number. And if I have um, integration with collaboration tools in my instance, like MS Teams, it'll have a Teams button here within Service Operations Workspace. So within the right-hand sidebar, I'm able to collaborate directly and communicate directly uh, using Teams, for example, uh, with this person. Okay, so what we'll do next is we're going to schedule the change and I'll show you what that uh, new experience looks like. So we're presented with um, a calendar view, uh, which essentially is initially blank. So I can't see any information on this calendar view at this stage. I need to first populate my planned dates in order to see information here. So let me go and schedule this change for tomorrow. And we will uh, make the change window for an hour and schedule the change. So immediately I can see uh, I have an issue because conflicts have been detected. 
And on here, it will it's displaying to me that there's a blackout window and I've scheduled my change within the blackout window, which is why I have a conflict. Um, and I can also see I've got a maintenance window here on the weekend, which is where I should be scheduling my change. Now I can go and update the dates here uh, in order to uh, in order to change that, or I can use this uh, tool, which is essentially the scheduling assistant, to automatically schedule the change at a conflict-free time. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see my scheduled uh, time has moved to within this uh, maintenance window. So the system has done that automatically for me, which is a nice feature. So the change now is scheduled. So we'll jump back to uh, the, the, this tab, the overview tab. Now, if I wanted to look at, um, if I wanted to look at more information, I'll just quickly go through these other tabs here. So the details view is kind of similar to the old uh, view. You 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 can see, as you can see here, some of the uh, some of the uh, fields that you're used to seeing on the form uh, are displayed on the detail view. If if you want to get more detail, uh, change tasks we'll come back to. Related records is like the uh, the related list, which is usually at the bottom of the form, and that's where I can see. Affected CIs, impacted services, uh, etc. This, these, uh, these other lists will populate as we as we go through. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got a summary. <clears throat> we've got our scope and impact. We have scheduled the change. Now we can uh, assess the risk. So we will fill in the risk assessment form. Uh, this is going to bring up the risk questions. Now I'm going to say uh, this affects a critical business service because it's email. It's going to be a complex change. Um, it's complex to back out. We do have redundancy. And it's moderately difficult to verify if the change was successful. Submit that. Okay, I'm expecting, oh yeah, I have to go back, sorry. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see on the right-hand side that first of all, the risk assessment uh, container that was in the middle here has disappeared. And on the right-hand side, we can see the risk outcome. So our risk is high and that's based on a, num a number of factors. It's based on the model success score which is how well we have done in the past, our history of success with this normal change model. We've got our assignment group, which has got a change success score of a uh, medium change success score. And we've got an overall calculated probability of success of, of moderate. So all of these factors in combination with the data from the risk assessment, which I'm able to view here if I need to, has given me an outcome of, of high. If I hover over this little eye here, it tells you that risk is, is calculated uh, by balancing all those factors uh, that I mentioned before to give me that outcome. Okay, so that, <clears throat> that, is, uh, that is how the risk assessment works and how, how that looks. Um, now, what I'll do, we, we could add some additional detail, but just uh, in the interest of time, I'm just going to um, save the record and I'm going to at this point uh, request approval. I could create change tasks here uh, if I if I wanted to, but I'm going to let the system create them for me. When, when we get to implement, the system will create some default tasks for me and then I'll we'll come back to show you how those tasks look in SOW. So let's request approval. Okay, so we, we, if we look at the top here, we can see new state has been completed and the change has moved to assess. 
And again, I'm able to add work notes uh, if I if I need to. Um, I can also uh, I can also look at um, the uh, the activity on the change if I want to see that. I'm able to see that uh, activity, or I can hide that. Okay, so we we want to now go and approve the change. If I wanted to see who is scheduled to approve it, I I click on related records, and I can click on the approvers tab and I can see it's been assigned to the application development team to approve. So I'm now going to impersonate one of the team and approve the change. So let me go here. I'm going to impersonate uh, Bushra. <clears throat> now, what I didn't do was uh, save the um, change number, uh, but that's okay. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to find it. So I'm now logged in. Busher is an ITIL user as well. So Busher gets a landing page of service operations uh, workspace, and she should have received a notification that the change there's the change waiting for her uh, approval. So let's go and find that change. I uh, just need to add a field here. Okay. So here's the change that we created. As an approver, when I go into the change, uh, again, I've got my uh, I've got my summary here, so I can see what the scope and impact is. Um, I can see uh, the the basic information about what's going on with this change. I can see the risk, who it's assigned to, the schedule, etc. Uh, if I want to go into the details, obviously, I can do that. So the, at, right at the top, we've got this approval card that gets surfaced. So that's the first action for me to take. And I can make an approval decision here. Um, I'm going to approve the change and say, looks good, please proceed. Okay, and submit that. And if I wanted to add in work notes, so if there was something I wasn't happy about, uh, I can obviously do that and I can ask questions, et cetera, uh, in, this, in this space. So we can see um, peer approval, the first line of approval has been completed and the change has moved from assess to authorize state. Uh, because it's a high risk change, it needs to go to CAB for approval. And I can see again, if I go to related records and I go to approvers, it's 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 waiting for CAB uh, to approve as the next set of approvers. So I'm going to impersonate my CAB approver to show you the next level of approval. And Kristen is a member of the CAB. CAB is Change Advisory Board. Now, Chris, Kristen is, is an admin, so Kristen doesn't get a service operations uh, workspace as their um, initial view. But what we can do, so I'm just going to move this Zoom window out the way. We can jump straight into Service Operations Workspace. And again, I need to find that uh, change request. So I'll jump down to Changes. And whoops, this is giving me what I need. Let me do what I did before.
So just adding that uh, column. So I can sort and find the change. And, oh, that's not still not giving me what I want. Um, sorry, let me jump back. Um, I should have copied that change number. Apologies, that's my fault. Let me go back. And I should see the change here. Apologies. I missed a step here to copy the change number. Let me do that now. Go back to my cab persona. and go into service operations workspace. I think I should be able to do a search here and jump into that change. So we can, uh, for, for the purposes of this exercise, we can assume that there's a cab meeting running and as part of the cab, we've we've had a look at this change. Again, we're able to look at any of the uh, the parts of the change that we need to in order to make uh, the decision on it. And the first card again at the top for any approval is the approval card. And we will say approved by cab, just to show you what that looks like. So the change should now move from authorized state to scheduled, uh, which it has. And now we can go back to our uh, ITIL user to complete the rest of the life cycle. So let me go back to ITIL user. And um, I can use my recently viewed uh, links here to go straight back into that change. So as an ITIL user, I can see uh, the changes now in scheduled state. Um, and once I move it to implement, uh, we'll, we'll, for the sake of argument, say that implement time is, is here. I'm ready to implement the change so I will click the implement button. And you can see uh, that we've got a couple of change tasks that have been created by the system. If I expand this container, we have uh, either a card view, which looks like this, which is kind of a, a nice high level summary view of the task, or we can get a list view, which is the more traditional view uh, that you might be used to in the, in, the, in the old UI. What we can do here is uh, we can progress these tasks to close in order to progress the change through the life cycle. So you can see the task, have a look at the detail. This is an implementation task. So let's say I am now doing that implementation on that email server and I've finished my implementation. I will close the task. And if we go back to the change, you can see that task is now closed. And I have my next task here, which is my post implementation testing task. So I'll conduct my post implementation testing and make sure that looks okay. And again, I'll close that task just to show you what happens. So that is closed. We jump back here, you can see uh, both tasks have been uh, closed off and I can now finish my implementation and move the change to review. So I'll click on review button.
okay, the change is now uh, in review. So I'm able to put in some notes. Uh, I can capture information that I need to in order to um, put in details about uh, any post-implementation activity that I need to capture. And I can also capture my closure information on the change. So my close code, I'll say successful, all okay, and save that. And finally, I can close the change. Okay, so you can see really what we did was we just walked through a simple example there of how to create a new change in SOW, uh, complete the scope, assign the change, schedule the change, uh, manage tasks, etc., all within the new uh, UI experience, the next gen experience in, in service operations workspace. So um, it, as I said, simplified view and uh, allows you to focus uh, on the, the jobs that you need to do next. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and just see if we have any questions before I move on to the next section. So I can see we've got a few things in the chat. Okay, uh, let's have a look at these questions. So can I apply templates in SOW? I only know how to do it in classic view. Um, so yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the, at the moment, there's no support for uh, templates um, apart from change models. So you can build a change model where you can template some information. It's not exactly the same functionality, but it, it it's kind of similar. And we're going to go through change models um, uh, a little bit later. So I'll show you how that works. Um, the template is for normal changes. Uh, so yeah, we used a model. So we used a normal change uh, model, uh, not 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 a template uh, for this example. A uh, question from Janice: Can multiple CIs be linked? As a large organization, we struggle with changes revolve around one primary CI. We patch reboot hundreds of servers every night, which we want to log in a combined change. Um, yes, Janice, absolutely. So that 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 all goes to your CMDB data um, and and the mapping that you have uh, if you're using discovery or you're using um, uh, application services and service mapping, then yes, uh, you can absolutely have that data you or or you can even manually add multiple CIs uh, onto your change even if you don't have that in place. So yes, absolutely they can they can be linked and they can be added to the change. Next question from uh, Mimi. We have ITOM up and running. Is any other configuration required from ITOM perspective? So um, for in order for change to function within SOW, um, the ITOM only really plays a role in terms of the CMDB uh, data and having that impacted service and affected CI's information populated. So it, it's the same regardless of the UI. So remembering that service operations is essentially, uh, the workspace is essentially a new uh, UI. The underlying functionality from ITOM um, is, is the same. Uh, another question from Mimi, when CAB opens a change request, will it open in SOW? Um, if the CAB member is, um, is, is an ITIL user, then they will get SOW as their landing page. If not, they can always go and select it. So they can always go to workspaces and choose service operations workspace if, if they want to open it uh, in that view. Uh, next question from Jacques. Interesting that your demo allowed cab approval prior to creation of any tasks. Uh, one of our checks company does is to ensure all tasks are created and assigned prior to cab approval. Uh, yes, I agree, Jacques. It's that wasn't very good practice that I showed you. As a, it's just an example. Obviously, um, good practice is definitely exactly as you said. Create all the information on the change, especially the tasks, etc. All that detail should be on the change and locked down before the change gets approved by anyone. Yes, so completely agree. Uh, but I wasn't trying to demo best practice here. 
just showing you the functionality. Um, next question from Brad, are you able to put the change into review state if there are active change tasks? Um, no, you need to close out, you need to close out the tasks usually uh, in order to uh, review the review the change. That's that's best practice. And usually there are business rules to ensure that. Uh, another question, is SIW for, for ITOM the same application as this service operations workspace? Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a number of different uh, workspaces, but essentially service operations as a, as a product combines a number of elements from ITSM and ITOM into one uh, view, into one functional view. So in SOW, it does combine uh, different elements and different functionality from ITOM and ITSM. Another question from Jacques, is CAB required an out-of-the-box field? We currently have it on our form, didn't see it. Uh, yes, so CAB required is an out-of-the-box field and you do see it on the classic uh, view. Um, we haven't shown it here uh, in, in, in this view, but if you wanted it to be shown, uh, you can uh, you can have that field displayed. You can customize your view to, to show that field if you wanted to. And another question from Hazel, is it possible straightforward to shift from existing UI to SRW? Mm, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, I think it's more about uh, the user experience and how easily your user base adapts to this. So the um, you know the idea is is to provide a simplified view that's easier to manage. However, if your if most of your users that are creating and managing changes are used to the old UI, then maybe they're more comfortable with that. But I think ultimately, you know, uh, you you will see this this interface this UI becoming more dominant uh, as as the main UI as as we move forward. All right, let me uh, just have a look at the chat. Uh, a question from Julia, always wondering why there is no approvals list in SOW by default. Uh, Julia, you can uh, you can see approvals. So on as I said, as I showed you on the D, on the related records, that's where you can see your approvers. Um, so it is there, but if you wanted to add it. You, you could actually add it as a as an overview container here. And I'm going to move into the next section just to, in terms of time, uh, just so I can uh, get through everything that I need to get through. Keep the questions coming, some great questions. Thanks, guys. And um, I'll cover them off at the end. So for the next section, I'm going to need to be an admin. And the next section is really to show you um, what we're going to do is we're going to configure a dynamic overview page. And I'm going to show you how you can do that without needing to use UI Builder. So let me show you uh, the, the example here. So <clears throat> usually, if I wanna make updates to my uh, workspace and add widgets or, or configure anything, I need to use UI Builder. Now, feedback from customers is that can sometimes be quite complex. So within Change, we've provided a much easier way to do it using table-based uh, configuration. So if we see here under Change and then Overview uh, Workspace Configuration, See here, we've got overview container, card, and journal field. That's where you can configure all these uh, different items on the on the workspace. I can see first of all my uh, the, the different containers that I have, um, and they're all according to the different states. So, with Service Operations Workspace, it will have different containers and different views at different states. You can see uh, everything at the moment here is set to active and that there is a, um, a default uh, state of whether the display action bar is either false or true and whether advanced conditions are used or not. 
and there's also an order. So let's jump into the state equals new just to show you what that looks like. And I'm just going to change my scope so I can edit this record. So you can see for state is new, um, it's, it's set to active and we've got some conditions here. Now the conditions for this one is just state is new, but obviously I could add any additional conditions that I wanted to, to, to configure it. Um, I can also use advanced condition for scripting if I need to do that. And this is where I can see my cards. So those are the cards that are, that are displayed. Uh, you can see again, active is true. This is whether it, show, it will display by default in an expanded view or a contracted view. And this one here uh, changes uh, for a new record in draft state, whether it's whether the field is displayed or not. So currently you can see only summary is displayed uh, for, in, for a draft record in new state. So just for to show you how this works, what I'll do is I'm going to update schedule. I'm going to change that to true. And I'm going to save this record. So when I go into service operations workspace, and I create a new change. So previously, what we saw when we created a normal change was we just saw the summary container. <clears throat> now you can see I've got my summary container. I've also got my schedule uh, because I, I said that needs to be added. So when I'm creating the, the, the change in draft, I can put in some information here and I can save the record. And, and sorry, I could I could have scheduled it also uh, all within draft state at that time uh, before I saved it because that was available to me. So just to show you how you can easily uh, configure it for for whatever you what, whatever whatever fields and containers you want to see. Um, you've also got the option of changing the heading if you wanted to call it call it something else. You can also update this update this data here to change it. Now, the other aspect I want to show you is um, how to change if we if we wanted to add an additional field uh, that that we don't have. How do we add an additional field? So, uh, oops. All right. So the way we do that is we kind of have to go out of this uh, in order to change the layout in, in the more traditional way that we change layout. So just to show you how that works, I can just go to uh, any change request. And obviously this is in the classic uh, view. And once that loads uh, from the um, from the additional actions me menu at the top here, I can go to configure form layout. And you'll see all these different views. We want to make sure we've got SOW change overview view selected. Um, and that will that will show me currently the, the different sections that I've got available to me with the different fields. So if we look at um, uh, summary, you can see it's got short description, description and justification. Let's say I wanted to add another field uh, there to summary. Um, let me just uh, edit this section, get in the right scope. Let's say I want to add a uh, risk risk and impact analysis. I want to add that field to this view. So I've got SOW change overview in summary, and I can add that, save it. Uh, 
Okay, now just to show you, you can test this on your uh, old classic form. If you go to view, just make sure you've got uh, SOW change overview selected. And that will show you uh, the, the data that's being ingested by the workspace. So you can see on summary now, I have risk and impact analysis field as well as short description, description and justification. So again, if we go and create a, a new change, choose normal again, <clears throat> you can now see risk and impact analysis field is there. So pretty easy to, to go and configure and customize that to give you the data that you need to surface uh, within SOW using that table-based uh, method. Now, just finally, what I want to do is just quickly show you um, change model. Now, we might not might not have time to go and create one, so I might just show you uh, what it, what it looks like within SOW. So, out of the box, uh, we have change models. Change models are really there to help you uh, tailor your change process for specific use cases. So, if you have some use cases, for example, patching or cloud provisioning or, or some kind of automated changes, you're able to use a change model to only describe the states and the state transitions that the change needs to go through without having to go through the normal ITIL full-blown normal change uh, process. So for example, we can see a cloud infrastructure model here um, is a model that uh, can be used for provisioning uh, cloud infrastructure, obviously. These record presets, this goes back to the question about change templates. So with a record preset, I'm able to set values on, uh, on the change in the model. Once I set a value here, the user will not be able to update these fields. They will be grayed out and, and they won't be able to change them. So as an example here, this one, will have type normal and assignment group set to network, and the user won't be able to change that, uh, that information. Uh, I can also have security on my model, so I can define uh, who can read and who can write, so who can use the model. I can restrict the model to specific uh, groups or people if I need to. And these are the states that the change will move through. So it's only got two states. It's got an authorized state, and from authorize, I can go to closed. So it's it's very simple. And then obviously from authorized to closed, there's a, there's a, there are transition conditions where the change needs to be approved. And there are some mandatory fields that need to be completed in order to transition from authorized to close. But I'll just show you what that looks like within service operations workspace. So let's go again and create a new change request. So I can see here, um, now if I had, if I was running uh, my um, performance analytics jobs to capture um, change closure data in my instance, which, which I'm not, I would be able to see the success rate of all these changes. So I can see it there for my normal change and some of these uh, pre-approved standard changes. Uh, this one I haven't run yet, so there's there's nothing there. But that also helps me because on the card, I can see how successful these changes have been in the past. So let's choose cloud infrastructure and then click next. So you can see at the top here, it's only got authorized and closed as the states. So the rest of the life cycle is not required for this model. And again, I can populate some information here just to show you. Now, risk and impact analysis is there because I had added it for everything. I can restrict it to specific models if I want to. So let's just save that. And you can see um, the change model is telling me that I need to supply some specific information in order to continue. So CI, my plan dates, that needs to be uh, provided. So let's set some dates here. Now this is showing in this view because uh, I had changed that obviously. 
I've configured it. And it would save that. Okay, and now I do need to provide a CI, but because I haven't saved it, it's not allowing me to uh, progress because I, ne I, I need to uh, provide uh, CI. You can see here, um, we'll just give it a CI. You can see here, as I said, this field here, network has been grayed out because I had that in my presets, in my template. So hopefully that allows it to go from authorize and now it will generate the approvers that it needs. Okay, so that's just a, a very quick example uh, uh, of, of what the model looks like in, in service operations workspace. And now I can see the other cards coming in that, that can guide me through the process. I've got a conflict, so I can again go and reschedule that change using the uh, scheduling assistant to find a conflict-free change window. So that, uh, that covers the main part of what I wanted to uh, show you. So just to quickly go through what we did. Uh, so we covered off creating a new change and how to do that from within SOW and had a first look at the uh, dynamic overview pages, filled out the change request. We were then able to schedule a conflict-free time slot for the change using the um, neat uh, calendar view to make sure that we're not within a, a blackout and that we are within a maintenance window and show you how scheduling the system can find that time slot very quickly for you. We then evaluated the risk and showed you how that looks in terms of risk calculation on the form on the right-hand side. We then moved the change completely through the life cycle in SOW, which has been, uh, that functionality has been there since Utah and obviously is, is available now in, in Vancouver. And finally, I showed you how it's quite easy to configure and customize the dynamic uh, overview pages if you need to do that without needing to use UI Builder. And then we, we didn't actually configure a change model, but I showed you how uh, creating a change in SRW looks using a change model and how that works uh, in SRW. We've covered the poll. So thank you very much for attending. Hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, as I said, that's the final, my final um, live on ServiceNow session for this year. So wish you all the best for the holiday periods. Thank you very much for attending and look forward to seeing you in our sessions from next year.